This morning I posted a fucking TikTok about how fucking unfair it is that I've dedicated my life to the, mil the military and the Marine Corps and everything that I've done and that I was able to see my fucking perpetrator in court and how much it fucking sucked that he was being forced out of the military, that he would be getting an honorable discharge. Well, not even fucking 10 minutes ago, I just got word that this mother will be getting retained because it went all the way up across the board. Everybody said that they would not retain him. And the f***ing head honcho, the f***ing CG with all of the proof and a f***ing admission to guilt decided that they will retain him. And this is exactly why f***ing females in the military f***ing kill themselves. This is exactly why nobody f***ing takes this seriously. Yo, what the f***? <laughs> That video that has now gone viral, forcing the Pentagon to reassess a problem that's been festering for years, sexual abuse of female soldiers. The new Defense Secretary, Lloyd Austin, he spoke about that very video at his first briefing after taking office. I found the video deeply disturbing. And I've asked my staff for additional information, and I'll leave it at that. And Camp Lejeune in North Carolina, where the woman in that video serves, confirmed that they are addressing the issue and dealing with the accused perpetrator. They also said the allegation deals with the wrongful distribution of personal information, which is believed to be the photographs. And the Marine Corps says it takes all allegations seriously, and they're making sure that the woman who shot that video is safe from retribution. In 2019, the Defense Department released a report when it came to abuse. It showed... There are nearly 8,000 reported sexual assaults and an increase of 3% from the prior year and more than 1,000 harassment complaints with those going up by double digits. But you should know that experts who follow this say that that's probably a fraction of the reality. Underreporting is a huge problem for all the reasons you can imagine. I want to bring in our guest to discuss, Congresswoman Chrissy Houlihan. She's a Democrat from Pennsylvania. She's also an Air Force veteran. Congresswoman Thank you, and, and uh, I gotta tell you, I've been covering this issue from different military bases, different branches, even going to the military academies, what it seems forever. I keep hearing, okay, now that the problem's out in the open, we're gonna really get down to it, but it seems that the checks and balances and the places where people courageous enough, these women that can come forward to talk about what happened to them, nothing's really changed. I've heard the words, but in terms of action, we're kind of where we were since I've been talking about this going back, like I said, at least a decade. Yeah, and what a horrifying and disturbing video that was. And uh, I, I, my heart goes out to her as a survivor. Uh, what I would say is I served nearly 30 years ago, and when I was a young lieutenant, uh, this was an issue in a, a, a place where we had conversation and, and we said we were going to do something and we were going to do something. And 30 years later, for me at least, uh, as your data indicates, we have not done anything. And I'm really, really heartened to see uh, the new Secretary of Defense, uh, Austin, really seems to have taken this to heart you know, and has announced this 90-day commission to look into not just this incident, but just the holistic approach of the entirety of the DOD. A lot of things, if not most things in Washington, tend to break along partisan lines. It doesn't seem to me, and correct me if I'm wrong, this is a Republican or Democrat issue. Historically, the Joint Chiefs and the Military Command want to be able to keep the autonomy on how to discipline their ranks of the commanding uh, generals, or at least the, to the to the military commanders in, in the particular unit, and they don't want to have military prosecutors outside the unit being able to handle the cases. A am I wrong? This isn't really on politics. This is who retains the authority. Well, everybody, regardless of their political persuasion, has a different opinion on this. I know people who are uh, serving in the military now who would like to see it stay in the chain of command. I'd like I know people who are serving now who would like to see it removed and taken outside of the chain of command. I believe it ought to be taken out of the chain of command of the of the two people who are involved or the person who's involved, but it still needs to stay within the military code of justice. It still needs to stay within that service. Uh, we have seen, as you mentioned, issues of retribution, or we have seen issues where um, I don't think that the, the uh, allegation of assault is given justice uh, within its current state. So we have a lot of work to 
to do to take these uh, these survivors and these people uh, seriously uh, and to make sure that we are protecting those people who are protecting us. Uh, military right now is about 20% women. You know, our population is about 51% women. Uh, we really need to see all people who want to be able to serve to be able to feel safe in serving. And so we have a lot of work to do. You know, and talk about the consequences, Congresswoman. If people see the video right now, it's going to make somebody think twice about coming forward, about risking their own career, the backlash within the unit, um, and then their commanders not even looking out for their interests. I talk about the underreporting right now. I, I mean, I I've heard from, from folks close about how prevalent it is on an anecdotal basis. Maybe you can speak to it more. It must be a fraction of, of the actual reporting. Again, not dissimilar from the general population. I think that there's an enormous amount of underreporting, and I can imagine that this kind of a viral video, while I'm glad that it has inspired what I hope is real change, uh, probably has a very serious chilling effect on, on reporting uh, and also on recruiting, frankly. So we, we have a lot of different issues going on here where we need to be uh, jumping on this immediately, and I am really grateful to, to Secretary Austin for taking this so seriously in the early days of his, uh, his uh, position. Finally, as somebody who didn't wear a uniform, and I defer to you on this, uh, I remember covering the story with the Navy SEALs who had the courage to come forward and talk about uh, Gallagher, their commander, and uh, what they believe were the war atrocities they were doing and brought shame um, uh, to their uniform. And they were punished uh, at, at one report until it finally moved along. Is there, I know there's unit cohesiveness that's critical here, but doesn't this just be made intensely easier and take everybody off the hook if you go to military prosecutors, if there's an actionable case, instead of having commanders having decided to wield justice when they're not even steeped in the law? Well, so one of the things that I put forward as a piece of legislation that did get passed this last this last Congress, which is a bystander piece of legislation, we need to make sure, to your point, that you um, take care of each other. Uh, in the military, we are trained to do that, to leave no one behind. Uh, and this is a good example of it's not just about the accuser or the survivor. It's also about the people who surround those people. And they should have responsibility as well to be responsible to one another. And so this piece of legislation asked for an investigation into what could be done to hold those folks to account too. Uh, so there's a lot, as I mentioned, so much work to be done in this in this area and such a tragic and scary video. And I, I am so grateful to hear that people have reached out to her to make sure she's okay. Yeah, and it seems at least, and again, I've learned not to jump ahead, but um, that, you know, Secretary Austin um, is going to at least push for this, and it seems that there's more bipartisan support than maybe in the past to actually do something in no small part because of this video, but certainly not a new issue. Congresswoman, I appreciate your effort on this and also your time today. Thank you. Thank you. Be well. You as well. We come back, everyone. I'm going to pivot to COVID. As you know, more than a half a million Americans have been killed by COVID, but I got to say, and this is the first time I've been able to say this in, well, pretty much forever, Trend lines are showing we're finally heading in the right direction. After the break, ABC News Chief Medical Correspondent Dr. Jen Ashton, she'll join us with the very latest and whether or not we could be maybe in the home stretch.